In this video, we will share the story of a man who discovered a shocking event involving his wife and brother-in-law. Right before the entire family, something unbelievable happened that stunned everyone. Stay tuned to discover how this surprising scene unfolded and what it means for their relationships. My family gathered at the hotel to celebrate my younger sister's wedding. The air in the room was filled with the lively buzz of conversation. A party was going on downstairs, and the sound of people laughing and chatting could be heard throughout the room, along with the sound of glasses clinking and the occasional burst of music. Even though a lot was happening around us, I couldn't help but be captivated by the sight of my wife. Even though we had been married for 13 years, her beauty took my breath away. I looked at her with awe and admiration, and I felt overwhelmed with gratitude that she had chosen to spend the rest of her days with me. Our journey together had been long in coming. Our families had been inseparable for years. No one doubted we were meant to be together. As we progressed through adolescence, we were constantly reminded of the love that lay ahead through conversations about marriage. It felt like a dream come true when she agreed to be my wife. Our long history together, deep connection, and the love that had grown stronger over time all contributed to the feeling that marriage was a natural and unavoidable next step. I couldn't deny that my wife was an obsessive workaholic. Even though we were away from home, she could not entirely disconnect from the demands of her job. Her commitment to her journalism career at a prestigious organization was admirable. Still, it frequently caused her to be preoccupied with work, even when we were on vacation together. My attention was drawn to the lilting sound of my wife laughing during the various conversations. I stared at her, tracing the lines of her face as I noticed how her grin illuminated the room. If I hadn't been looking at her then, I would have missed out on a truly wonderful moment. She was taken aback by my focused gaze and turned to face me, her laughter fading. She couldn't resist gently teasing me because she sensed my curiosity. I just thought of something funny because I was intrigued. I moved closer to the conversation and inquired, What exactly is it? I'm sure I'll find it hilarious. She let out a quiet giggle, a teasing grin twirling on her lips. Oh, it's nothing, she said in response to my question. It was just a random thought that occurred to me, she explained. You wouldn't find it nearly as entertaining as I do. The task needed to be more significant for me to ignore. Try me, I said, my eyes full of interest and concern for the person I spoke with. She moved closer to me and whispered her amusing thoughts into my ear, maintaining a covert smirk in her eyes. My initial reaction was shocking because I had no idea, even after thirteen years of marriage, that my wife was so into wickedness. However, when the words reached me as the party was about to end, the children played in the garden and began shooting water pistols at each other. She then shared her dirty views on the shooting, which shocked me and made me laugh. After another three years had passed, my wife and I were sitting together, reflecting on the beautiful memories we had shared with our two daughters. As we discussed the exciting times we'd had together, we couldn't help but laugh. With a sense of nostalgia, I decided to capture those priceless moments by uploading the photographs I had taken during our trip. I cautiously connected my camera to my laptop, excited at the prospect of reliving happy memories and storing them digitally. However, just as I began the procedure, my computer abruptly turned off, perplexing me about what to do next. I didn't let this deter me, so I looked around the room for an alternative. The first thing that grabbed my attention was my wife's Mac. It was lying on a nearby table, patiently waiting for her to finish showering. When I considered the possibility of completing the task using my wife's Mac, I couldn't help but smile slyly at the corners of my mouth. After all, she was preoccupied, so she had no idea I was trying to be playful. I decided to make the most of the opportunity. After connecting my camera to her Mac and uploading the photos, I was suddenly confronted with a barrage of messages that appeared on the screen quickly. Because my curiosity had been piqued, I couldn't help but look at the messages, wondering why my wife took so long to shower. My heart sank with each new message, and disbelief washed over me. The contents of the texts revealed a little-known event that was unfolding right in front of my eyes. 
I was overcome with feelings of disbelief, rage, and betrayal all at once because I couldn't control my emotions. I took a deep breath and yelled at my wife from the top of my lungs. I didn't care about the consequences of my outburst. Can I use your Mac? I inquired, attempting to convey an air of indifference through my voice. My wife's voice could be heard responding casually from the bathroom, unaware of the events unfolding. She said, Sure, go ahead, to my question. As I sat there, dumbfounded by the messages I had just received, an epiphany struck me like lightning. My wife was unaware that the texts on her iPhone were being synced to her Mac, resulting in the unintentional disclosure of her rendezvous. As I wrote down the unknown number and saved it under Z, my hands began to tremble slightly as I pieced the puzzle together. A scowl began to form on my brow. With a sinking feeling in my stomach, I realized that Zed was none other than my brother-in-law, a person I respected and considered a family member. My mind was racing, and realizing what I had discovered made me feel like the room was closing. Betrayal, rage, and sadness mingled inside me like a violent storm. As these emotions erupted, I couldn't understand how the person I had let into my home and the confidence of my family could violate that trust in such a fundamental way. At the same time, a burden was placed on my shoulders, and my heart sank with the knowledge of the secret that threatened the very fabric of our family relationships. Undoubtedly, learning that my wife had been cheating on me had a significant impact on my emotional state. My discomfort and repulsion intensified as I continued to listen in on their conversations and observe how they interacted with one another. I may have second thoughts about our relationship and how well I know my wife. Throughout our trip, I struggled to maintain the appearance that everything was fine, even though I was experiencing significant emotional distress. On the other hand, my attempts failed because the disgust I felt in response to my wife's presence persisted. After my wife noticed a change in my behavior and questioned me about it, I downplayed her concerns by explaining that I was sick. I decided to hire a private investigator to track my wife's movements so that I could figure out when it all started and why they chose to betray me, my sister, and my entire family. I wanted to know more about them and what kind of people they were because, after reading the conversation, their new personalities appeared as if I were having relationships with strangers. I had high hopes that if I assigned the task to the private investigator, they could compile conclusive evidence of her dishonesty. The evidence provided to me by the P.I. made it very clear that my wife had been having an affair with my brother-in-law, as evidenced by photographs and chat logs that clearly show them doing so since a long time ago. It was difficult for me to keep my rage under control at all times, but I had to because I didn't want to confront her and punish her lightly. On the contrary, I will teach her the most important lesson of her life. She should never betray anyone, and the consequences of that lesson will haunt her for the rest of her life. I began to devise a plan to embarrass both her and the man she was having an affair with. Even though I was well aware that my sister would suffer significantly as a result of my actions, I felt compelled to do so to maintain my sanity. And because I couldn't bear the thought of my sister living a phony, happy life or being duped by her cheating husband. At the same time, I had to act as if nothing unusual was going on because I didn't want my wife to suspect that she was the target of my elaborate plan to humiliate her. Even though I began to feel yucky whenever she came close to me, or I approached her, I had to respond lovingly, even though I did make out with her. While plotting my revenge, after a long wait, I was presented with an opportunity to embarrass them. My unfaithful wife's birthday was just two weeks away. This was the ideal opportunity to exact my vengeance, because it allowed me to gather everyone and present evidence to back up my accusations. As usual, I approached her, and she was preoccupied with her work. However, I politely requested five minutes, which she graciously agreed to give, stopping everything to listen. I then told her I planned a large, extravagant birthday party. She initially expressed interest in what I offered for a short period, but then she checked her phone and informed me that she had been assigned a critical task that she could not refuse. She kissed me and suggested we postpone the celebration until she finished the task. 
I went upstairs to read her message because she was still unaware that her phone was synced with her Mac. As expected, my idiot brother-in-law wanted to ruin my wife's birthday celebration. He made it clear to my wife that he would only perform this year if it took place at our house, and he challenged her to find a way to meet his request. It was strange because my wife had enthusiastically accepted the challenge but had not mentioned the need to leave on her birthday. When I discovered that my wife and brother-in-law had used adrenaline to deceive me and my sister, it ripped my heart into thousands of pieces. But now that she'd rejected the first plan, I needed to come up with another. So instead of wallowing in my misery, I focused on developing a new strategy. After two days, she approached me and expressed her inability to complete her office assignment and her desire for quiet at home. She asked me to take our daughters out for the day. I didn't have another plan then, so I agreed to take them out on her birthday. My wife should have pursued a career in acting because she was constantly busy and portrayed herself as a workaholic throughout my life. But, in truth, she has a dark and dirty side hidden beneath her professional life. I could not believe she could complete the challenge while leading an everyday life for herself. Now that the time had come, I began reflecting on all the events she had missed and left for my daughters and me to enjoy while she played her infamous games in the background. Finally, in my agony, I devised my cruel plan, which I couldn't wait to carry out and witness their humiliation in front of the entire family. I'm not only going to expose her in front of my family and her family, but I am also going to expose her dirty side to her office staff because I will not allow her to live a peaceful life after I leave her. I didn't want to upset my sister, so I excluded her from my plans. As a result, I was forced to call everyone at the last minute to keep my wife from learning about the surprise birthday party I had planned for her. I planned and executed everything meticulously because I did not want any setbacks in my revenge. And because I didn't know where they'd do their dirty show, I installed baby cameras throughout my house, both inside and out. If my surprise plan failed, I would show them the dirty show I had captured on her birthday while my daughters and I were away, as she had requested to fulfill her sinful dare. Finally the day arrived, but I had yet to invite anyone. I waited for my jerk of a brother-in-law to arrive at my house first because I knew it was the only time he wouldn't contact my sister making it easier for me to lie to her. I had to drop my daughters off at my sister's to give her a reason not to doubt. I had turned on all cameras before leaving, and I remained vigilant until my wife's affair partner arrived. I dropped my girls off at my sister's and left immediately, knowing I'd leave my house before the appointed time. An early arrival of her affair partner was expected. Still, when he arrived at my home, I immediately called everyone in my family, her family, and several of her staff members I knew. I led everyone to the location where I had hidden spare keys to my house so that no one missed out on seeing my wife's immoral side. To my good fortune, everyone decided to arrive around two. The universe was also on my side because they all played their nasty shooting game simultaneously. When they saw everyone around them, including myself, with a cake in my hands, my jerk brother-in-law dashed inside to retrieve his shirt. My wife, who was kneeling and drinking his shot, began screaming. She cleaned her face before covering herself with whatever she had in her hand. Before I could respond, my wife's father intervened and slapped her for being so cold, insensitive, and ungrateful. She indulged in wicked activities instead of enjoying life with her husband and daughters. That was the cherry on top because I hadn't planned that slap. Then my brother dragged our brother-in-law and punched him, kicking him out of my house within a few minutes. Her office staff had awkwardly said goodbye to me, and then my family had left. Finally, her family apologized to me for their daughter's shenanigans. I had to inform my sister about her husband's betrayal of her after the incident, and they divorced within a few months. After that, I filed for divorce, and all of our assets were divided equally according to the law. I also gained custody of my daughters because both families agreed with me. My wife was forced to leave her job after her dirty laundry was shown to a few human resources employees. Because she did not give any notice before quitting, no recommendation letter or acknowledgement awaited her, and she struggled to find new work, despite the numerous obstacles she faced. I sent my daughters to see their mother once a month so they wouldn't grow up without a mother figure in their lives. However, I was nervous throughout their time with their mother because I didn't like her, 
and didn't think she'd have a good influence on my daughters. My sister was so hurt by the betrayal that she attempted suicide and died. After that, I left the city because I couldn't bear to live in the same place where my sister had died in misery. Furthermore, I couldn't bear to look at my ex-wife's face because she was the one who had led my sister to suicide. The infidelity of both my ex-wife and my brother-in-law brought down two families. After leaving the city, I have no idea what happened to my ex-wife or brother-in-law. I've dedicated my life to raising my daughters and don't have the time to cry over heartbreak and betrayal. In conclusion, the devastating betrayal and infidelity I uncovered shattered not just my marriage, but also the trust within our extended family. The emotional toll, especially the loss of my sister, has left deep scars that continue to affect me profoundly. Despite the pain, my priority remains my daughters, and I strive to provide them with stability and love amidst the turmoil. Subscribe to Secret Spouse Stories on our platform for more gripping stories of secret betrayals and hidden truths. I appreciate your support.